Welcome to the Center for Student Learning Study Skills Workshop, Plan for Midterm Exams. My name is Melissa Horman and I am the Study Skills Coordinator in the Center for Student Learning and I will be speaking today for this presentation. We will do a personal check-in as we head into the middle of the semester. We will check in on your time management and how you can manage the little time you do have during this time of the semester while addressing how and what to multitask on. Since we are also talking about how to manage the little time you do have, we will talk about how to study smarter and not harder during this stressful time of probably three or more exams all within a week's time. Finally, since it is such a hectic time of the year, we will also look at if you are stressed and how to ease that stress in your life in easy ways. You may not have exams titled as midterms, but the midterm time in the semester is very stressful with a lot of tests and assignments falling all within a short time of one another. Let's first think about how your time management skills have been so far this semester. This is a good time to think about how you have been keeping track of your time and what some other and better ways of managing your time may look like. What have some of your challenges been thus far in managing your time? What are some successful tactics that you have found useful in managing your time that you want to continue doing? Let's do this worksheet together to check in on your time commitments during this time in the semester. You may be surprised about where your time goes. You can print out this worksheet from the slide, access it on the CSL's online library, or find a handout in the CSL. Read down the left column of tasks that you may or may not do on a daily or weekly basis. In the next column, write out the specific number of hours the task may take you, such as number of hours you may sleep at night. You want to write out six or however many hours of sleep you get at night. If there is a time seven next to it, that is to get the total number of hours a week this task takes up. Do this for all of the tasks and add up your number of hours to get a total. Once you have a total, you will write this number again in the first line below 168 to subtract it from that number. This will be your last number to write down next to hours to study. You can now see where your time goes and how much time you have left to study in your week. This number should equal about two times the amount of credit hours you are taking. This means you are able to get two hours of outside class studying done for every one hour you are in class. If your number of hours to study is minimal or in the negatives, you need to reconsider where your time is going and commit it to the academics first. This is a good check-in to see where your time is going as you are very busy with academics and other commitments right now. You have now seen how little time you may have to study or do other activities. So how can you manage this little time you do have? There are two main points to managing your time when you have very little of it, planning and scheduling efficiently. When you plan, you have a schedule of some sort which will give you something to follow and keep you on task. This can help some people when they have so much to do, especially when it is easy to push studying off till the very end of the day. So you can schedule in study time to be sure you do the hours you have set aside for academics. Also, when planning, know your limits so you don't overschedule yourself because sometimes we can think we can do more in one day than we actually can. Plan realistically and efficiently to be able to complete all that you would like to complete in the time you have. Try to complete all of your studying before it gets dark outside. This may be hard for some students, 
but try to push all of your academic commitments before it gets dark out because the later in the day it gets, the less attention span you have to be able to sit down and retain information for an extended period of time. A way to beat uh, the nighttime studying is to study between classes and during wait time. This way, you are using all of your day time efficiently while you are in the academic mindset. Finally, a way to cut down on a lot of extra time spent on studying is to utilize tutors and study groups to ask questions to, discuss information with, and learn information from that you may not know. Other students may know what you are having a hard time learning, so utilize those around you to cut down on the time you may have spent struggling to learn information. Watch this great TED Talk to see how one person is viewing multitasking in the world today. I'm a designer and an educator. I'm a multitasking person and I push my students to fly through a very creative multitasking design process. But how efficient is really this multitasking? Let's consider for a while the option of monotasking. A couple of examples. Look at that. This is my multitasking activity resolved. So trying to cook, answering the phone, writing SMS, and maybe uploading some pictures about this awesome barbecue. So someone tell us the story about super taskers. So this 2% of people who are able to control multitasking environment. But what about ourselves? And what about our reality? When's the last time you really enjoy just the voice of your friend. So this is a project I'm working on and this is a series of front covers to downgrade our super hyper to downgrade our super hyper mobile phones into the essence of their function. Another example, have you never been to Venice? how beautiful it is to lost ourselves in this little street on the island. But our multitasking reality is pretty different and full of tons of information. So what about something like that to rediscover our sense of adventure? I know that could sound pretty weird to think about mono when the numbers of possibilities is so huge. But I push you to consider the option of focus on just one task or maybe turning your digital senses totally off. So nowadays, everyone could produce his mono product. Why not? So find your monotask spot within the multitasking world. Thank you. The video spoke about monotasking as a way to really focus in on one task at a time and be in the moment with it to truly understand and enjoy it. With that, what are some of the things you feel are able to be multitasked in your day? Included on the slide are a few ideas of things that could be multitasked. These are very easy tasks that do not take critical thinking. However, when you are at work, in class, or studying, you should not be multitasking because of the amount of critical thinking and effort these tasks take. Multitasking tasks such as studying could make the task take up to three times as long to complete. Take the multitasking quiz online to see how good you are at multitasking difficult tasks. Since your time is limited during this time in the semester, you want to be studying smarter and not harder. 
You have taken a round or two of exams already, and you have hopefully experimented with some different study techniques and test-taking techniques. Know what you did incorrectly from the other round of exams and try to fix it for this next round. Another way to study smarter is to chunk information as you go. This will make it so you have to go back and review as you study. This is a much better way of mastering information before you move on to another topic. The last tip to study smarter and not harder is to implement multi-sensory learning into how you are learning. When you are just using one sense while studying, you do not retain as much information as you would if you used more than one sense, which you can see on the triangle on the slide. You can see that teaching others can help you retain about 90% of the information. This is a great, easy way to retain information you need to study. Use a study group, a partner, or even a mirror to teach yourself. Remember to try to implement techniques where you are studying smarter and not harder. Let's go over a few general tips on taking and acing your midterms exams. Knowing the format of an exam can inform the way you study for it. Just as with recall sort of tests such as multiple choice or matching, you can study in recall method with flashcards or practice tests. Studying is much more than memorizing or regurgitating information on a test. Study enough to be able to apply information on your test. This may take a little bit more time and effort, but you will feel much more confident in the material applying it to the questions you may not have been able to just memorize the answer for. When you get your test, do the easy questions and questions you know the answers to first. This way you can build confidence and possibly gain information to inform other questions that are more challenging or that you may not know the answer to. Also, when you are taking a test, ask your professor if you can annotate on the test. Cross out information, circle important pieces, draw arrows. By doing this, you are involving yourself in the test and not skipping over any important information that could be included. It's so easy to skip over a not or but in a question. Finally, watch out for faulty logic when taking a test. Your professors aren't out to trick you, but they want to make sure that you know the correct answer, so watch out for faulty logic to make you rethink your answer. These are very easy techniques to implement into your repertoire to be as successful as you can be on your midterm exams. Finally, today I want to discuss stress. This is a very stressful time of the year. You need to recognize if you are stressed, and if you are, then you need to know how to reduce stress in your life. To do this, first we will look at a questionnaire to see if you are stressed. Take a minute to ask yourself these 10 questions. Write yes or no for your responses to each of the questions and count your total responses for both the yes and no answers. How many yes and no answers do you have? If you are within the 5 to 7 range of yes answers, you are mildly stressed. However, if you are more in the 7 to 9 range of yes answers, you should consider options on regulating your time more or talking with someone on how to reduce stress in your life. There are many ways in which to reduce stress. Everyone has their own way of reducing stress in their lives. If you don't have a way of reducing stress, start experimenting with some different ways as an outlet. There are three things to remember when you want to reduce stress in your life. There are consequences for every decision you make. Change is inevitable and your source of stress could change tomorrow. And ask for help from others for a way of cooperation.
Stress is hard to reduce, let alone deal with on a daily basis. So find a way to reduce stress in your life so it does not take over your life. Ask yourself those questions on the last slide as a check-in throughout the semester to see how many yes answers you have. There are a lot of people on campus that you can talk to about having a lot of stress in your life. Visit the Counseling Center to get more help with stress. This is a great visualization of different foods that can help or can hurt your brain. The food you eat can affect your body more than you think. Eating junky food is so easy, not to mention it tastes great. Often, it is much easier for time's sake to get something unhealthy than it is to get something healthy. Make eating right easy. For example, stay away from salty foods. Not only are they bad for your brain, they are bad for your heart. Plan ahead so you can stop with the fast food. If that helps, carry a backpack with healthy snacks. For more information on this topic, come to a Healthy Mind and Body workshop. This concludes the plan for midterm exams workshop. If you have any further questions about this workshop or the content, please come to or contact the Center for Student Learning at 843-953-5635. We are located on the first floor of the Adelstone Library off of Calhoun Street and are also mobile at csl.cfc.edu. Please take a look at our other videos available for our other topics and online library of handouts as a resource. We hope to see you in the CSL soon.